Hello, everybody, and welcome to the official podcast of the United Grand Lodge of England. My name is Sean Butler, and I'm joined today by... Stephen Whiteley. James Dalton. How are you both? Uh, I'm quite tired today, to be honest, but... Now, why is that, Stephen? I heard a vicious rumour that you were out until 6am this morning. Would that be correct? Uh, I, I couldn't possibly comment. 6am? I haven't seen 6am in some time, actually, I have to say. <laughs> Typical students. I actually woke up at 6am this morning at the time you were going to bed. Jealous, though. You should be ashamed of yourself. Uh, the 5am the take, the takeaway leftovers were, were worth Domino's. it. Dominoes? Yeah. <laughs> Other Spot pizza on, brands are available, of course. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you are very welcome to be with us today. And you'll notice we don't actually have a title yet. We are still working on that. And in fact, this whole episode, uh, this first introductory episode of uh, the official podcast of the United Grand Lodge of England, will be dedicated to that very purpose. Now, gentlemen, uh, as you may know, we put out a note in the first rising asking members, Freemasons, to send in their suggestions. And it's safe to say they didn't disappoint. There are many suggestions in front of us here, I have to say, Sean, including one brother who has sent a list of 20 potential names. I mean, thanks. The range is spectacular, shall we say. (laughs) Yes, thank you to that particular brother. Uh, Some absolutely brilliant suggestions. And I'm not just saying that, actually. There have been some absolutely brilliant name suggestions to come through gentlemen do you have a favorite this Ah. is a it's a tricky one because there are some good ones now actually before we get to that are there any that actually particularly stood out to you that you'd like to mention for what reason sean um for us to reflect on for us to share the creativity of our vast membership with the listeners there's one that I have here called Traversing the Tessellated, which I thought was a nice play on uh, alliteration. Mm, like that. That was from who? That was from Kalish Singh. It was his first suggestion of his 20 lists that he sent through. So thank you very much, Brother Kalish. Thank you very I much. Think, I think a prize for obscurity has to go to, to Dolphin. Dolphin? Well, who, who because they operate in pods. Ah. <laughs> This is from... Uh, Worsh- I mean, it's, <laughs> it's creative. I'll give him that. Worshipful brother Keith Willey. Congratulations, Worshipful brother Keith. It's a, a first-rate suggestion, um, although I'm not quite sure it was exactly what we were looking for, but thank you no, so much. But not bad. And actually, Worshipful brother Keith, you're not alone in the creativity. We've had some fairly sort of, I guess, what you would consider to be common suggestions. So the cornerstone... You know, a few people um, suggested that. The keystone, a few people suggested that. Obviously, the challenge that we have, gents, is that we want it to be obvious that this is a Freemasonry podcast, don't we? Yes, and someone, in fact, did put the Freemasons podcast down here. Did they really? They did. Ah, well, this is the difficulty. So in First Rising, what we said to people was, is that if their suggestion was picked, they would receive a signed copy of The Craft uh, by John Dickey. An excellent book, by the way. If you've not read it, I can thoroughly recommend. Mm -hmm. Other Masonic books are available. Of course. However, I think the train of thought is that there'll probably be two parts to the name of the title. We we want a clever name and then what it actually is. Yes, because, James, can you explain to us why it's important that the, the word Freemasons or Freemasonry is somewhere in there? Well, we want people who aren't just Freemasons to listen to the podcast and Mm. to just maybe discover Freemasonry through it. And when you're searching for a particular topic on your selected uh, platform, you're going to search for the subject. So we think it's important to have Freemasonry or Masonry in the title of the podcast so that somebody who doesn't know much about us but wants to discover can type in Freemasonry and see the name we choose today but also that it is a Freemasonry podcast. We think that's really important. Yes. I mean, we've, we've, we've obviously had some, um, some, some, some suggestions that perhaps you would have to be a Freemason to understand. So Marta, our producer, sort of like our marker for this. So if, Mar- if Marta the marker doesn't really... Oh, I like it. <laughs> yes. If she doesn't really understand it, then we know that... 
It's a you filter. Know. It's a good filter. Yeah, it is. The, 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 the public won't really get it. So, yeah. for example... She, she can also give us scowls when we get yes, boring or Yes, well, annoying. or when we mention her at all, actually. <laughs> but Simon Hall, a uh, provincial grand steward in Norfolk, sent in some great suggestions. Pay attention to the Worshipful Master. Tokens and words. The Master's voice. The HMV. No, that's His Majesty's voice, isn't it? Um, regular step and squaring the lodge. Looking at Martyr's face. Nothing coming forward yet. Can, can I just say that there's one here with 59 suggestions? Is that for 59? one person? Oh, my goodness. Let's take a quick look. Let's have a look. Who was that? Brother that Jeff, Jeff Palmer. Palmer. Jeff Palmer from Essex. from Essex. Martello Lodge, 7121. Thank you, Jeff. Those are... I mean, there's literally loads here. Let's go through some of Jeff's suggestions and, and, and see on, what James. we think. Okay, so what do we have? We have the square and compass, very traditional. Yep. A brother's squared, another brother, the foundation stone, the third edition from east to west. Jeff, I have to say, I think you've put a great deal of effort into coming up with these amazing names. And a wide which, range as well. A huge range of names here. Um, there is one suggestion, though, brethren, that I am going to point out, and I'm going to say this with a straight face. Uh-oh. Um, let me just try and find it. 24 inches measured. Family show. Let's move on to another name. Well, uh, what I was about to say was that uh, I think some of these are excellent suggestions for episode names. That is not yes. necessarily one of them, but... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And there I am trying to keep this conversation <laughs> on the straight and level path. Sorry. <laughs> well, I was being a typical student there for a well, second. I know, Sorry. Again, honestly. God. <laughs> Too much dominoes, aren't they? Um... Yeah, no, I think you're right, though, Stephen. I think there are definitely some names here, particularly on Brother Jeff's list. Yeah, I think we, we've, we've identified certainly. probably 90% of them would make fantastic episode names. Yeah, indeed. Um, so, thank you very much, Jeff. Yeah, Jeff, thank you. Um, a really interesting one that's come through um, that I wanted to mention from Brother David Stevenson uh, of Watford Lodge number 404 mm. and Old Fullerian Lodge of uh, number 4698. He suggested the name Shofar. Does anybody know what Shofar means? I mean, I have the reason written down in front of me, but I did not know (laughs) until I saw this. Before it was written down in front of you, did you know what it was? I mean, I could just say yes, couldn't I? You you could, Stephen, but that would be dishonest of you. I don't don't think anyone would believe me. I don't think they would. No, (laughs) so I'll be honest and say no. So, uh, Brother David Stevenson has suggested that the name Shofar, spelled S-H-O-F-A-R, for the reason being that this is the traditional Hebrew ram's horn, which was used by priests and musicians in ancient Israel to call for worship, ceremonial rites, or people's attention to listen to instruction. It would have featured prominently at the dedication of King Solomon's temple. Follows on naturally, of course, that podcasts as a form of communication would make Shofar fit. What do we think? That's a very peculiar piece of information that I'm very impressed that he knows. So um, being someone, Dave, brother David Stevenson has probably used Solomon, I would say, the Masonic learning platform. Which it. I highly recommend to your notice. Anybody listening who has not checked it out, solomon.ugle.org. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think... Shameless as well. <laughs> I know. Yeah, shameless plug. Um, yeah, Shofar. I mean, I think it's maybe a little bit too Masonic, isn't it? It falls into that bracket of... Interesting, certainly, but whether or not your non-Masonic audience would pick up on it, I'm not convinced. I think the Masonic audience wouldn't pick up on it as well. There's a risk of that. that. I can imagine that being one of those things that would be really fascinating as part of a lecture in a lodge room, or Mm. you you go to a special interest lodge and install Master's Lodge. I'd love to hear more about that. Um, But like we said at the beginning, we want to try and keep this as open for Mm. everybody to search for as we possibly can. And... Who's to say that we don't get Brother Stevenson back on to the podcast at a later point, date yeah. to talk more about that? That'd be really interesting as a topic potentially moving forward. So we've spoken about what we're looking for. We've gone through some of the names that we're not particularly going to be moving forward on this occasion with. Shall we say which is our favourite? Before we do, I would like an honourable mention of one that probably won't move forward as okay. Robo Deacon. Robo Deacon. That jumped out. At I me. am trying so hard not to laugh right now, but that is an incredible name. Who was that from? That was from Brother Paul O'Brien, uh, who's the secretary of the Cornishman Lodge, number nine three five zero. Who, who incidentally is also the person that, that picked out. I think certainly my favourite. Stephen is Stephen is certain that he has found <laughs> his favourite podcaster. Stephen, you know what? 
what is it you can share? Uh, I think uh, our best name given by Paul O'Brien uh, is Craftcast. Everyone turns to Marta. She's smiling. She's nodding. We like Craftcast. <laughs> I should say, poor Marta. She's sat opposite us in the studio here, but she doesn't have a microphone. So we're just getting these looks of agreement or disagreement from her face. But a great support, producer Marta. Um, I agree. I think Craftcast is an exceptional name. Simple, single word. Most people know what they mean about the craft in masonry. Mm -hmm. And then we'll tag on the Freemasons podcast at the end on the title for searching. I think it'd be good. Well, I mean, Craftcast explains exactly what the second half is. It's the Freemasons podcast, but with a, like what you're looking for, with a clever name to it. Split it up. You've got craft and podcast. Put them together. You've got Craftcast. I love it. Yes, I do also love it, but just like you had an honourable mention for Robo Deacon, another one of Paul's suggestions, I'd like to give a particular shout out to Brother Alex Sapich, who suggested the podcast title The Good, The Bad, and The UGLE. Oh, yes. That's, uh, I like that. So that has to be, a, I think I, I'm calling a stamp that that has to be. Uh, a title for an episode at some point slight side topic do you ever get brethren in your provinces or in your districts that rather than saying ugle so say ugly i've got i've, I've got uh, correspondence from ugly or from ugle i hear some very interesting takes on this acronym sometimes so i think that works really well i appreciate your your included inclusion of district there so thank you <laughs> a valued part of the family <laughs> ugly yeah ugly or ugle or ugl hmm that's another one. Sean, you, you actually work in Grand Lodge, right? Do I you, do. Does your, does your spine not shake ever so slightly when somebody calls it Yugal or ugly? It does, I have to say. It's, my spine literally tingles when I hear it. Well, in Gibraltar, because we're right next to Spain, if you shorten it wrong, incorrectly and you shorten it to, for example, GLE, then that's Grand Lodge Espana. So you have to be a little bit careful. Seems to be very careful. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a tight rope, isn't it? Yeah. Well, and, and there's lots of visiting that goes on between. So, so you mm. do actually because otherwise it can get quite confusing as to I which Grand Lodge you're talking about. I've completely hijacked the conversation here. No, not by at the all. Way. No, no, no hijacking here. Um, it does. It, it. You know what? It, yeah, it, it's one of those, isn't it? That. Um, but I get why people do it. It makes sense to do it. If there's not full stops between the letters, mm. does it naturally follow that it should be? Just one word? I don't know. Should, should there be full stops? No, I don't think so. I, I have I seen that before would... and it made me feel phys physically sick. <laughs> well, um, brother Alec, who sent that suggestion in, what do you use? Do you call it ugly? If so, get back in touch with us. Podcast at ugle.org.uk. Yeah, yeah, brother Alec. <laughs> throw, throw Alec the ball. Or tweet. I like Twitter. Tweet. Or tweet, yeah. of course. Yeah, please do, do, do feel free to tweet us. Um, so... We, we think we've got one, don't we? Yeah. Stephen, can you say the, the entire title for us, please? So, our, our podcast will be called Craftcast, the Freemasons podcast. Boom. Okay, so now we've got the name of the podcast, Craftcast, the Freemasons podcast. I think it's important for our listeners to know who we are that they're listening to. So I'm going to start with the esteemed brother to my right over here, Stephen. Tell us a bit about yourself and your Masonic journey. Well, um, I joined Freemasonry when I was 18. Uh, so that was four years ago. I'm 22 now. Baby. Uh, yeah, indeed. <laughs> um, yeah, I won't, I won't comment on, on Sean's or, or your age, so don't worry. Savage. <laughs> it's brutal. <laughs> um, yes. Both my parents are, are Freemasons and have been for, oh, a quick bit of maths, over 25 years. I'll just say over because then I could be slightly wrong. Nice. Um, my mum and my dad went to join at the same time. My mum joined first because, uh, well, the women's grand lodge were quicker at putting her through. So, uh, so she's got six months on him. And is she OWF or is she HFAF? She's, she's HFAF. So HFAF uh, are the only uh, lodge in a uh, grand lodge in Gibraltar, um, just because it sort of makes sense. It's not big enough to to have too many lodges there um so yeah so i had a sort of a a natural family uh connection to it and for i remember from and my dad always says from the age that i, I could talk i was asking to to join freemasonry wow. he'd come back from a meeting all dressed up in his in his suit and his tie and i'd go 
when can I join? And he'd go, when you're 18. So the moment your 18th birthday arrives, there you are, 18th birthday, happy birthday, son, here's, you know, some presents. Oh, and here's a form P. Well, actually, so, I, I mean, I think a lot is the assumption from a lot of people when, when they learn that, that I have that background is that I was sort of pushed towards it. And actually, my parents told me nothing more than, than the average candidate would know. I, I had no additional sort of understanding other than the concept that it means a lot to my parents and my parents mean a lot to me and therefore I sort of want to find out what, what yeah. this is all about. So it added to the curiosity. But I actually, so my as I say, my dad would come back every meeting, I'd ask, when can I join? And he'd say, when you're 18. And after a few years, sort of, I was like, well, I'm getting the same answer here. I'm not going to keep asking. So I stopped asking and I think he thought I'd lost interest. Mm. And then it got to my 18th birthday and I went on my 18th birthday, I went, so can I join now? Uh, so, so he gave me a port form P and, and off I went. And we were speaking about this a bit earlier, Stephen, weren't we? But I think, you, I mean, actually, we'd, we'd love for listeners to let us know if, if, if you also had this experience. But you were initiated, passed, raised and exalted by your dad, weren't you? Yeah, uh, all, all ceremonies uh, wow. by, by my dad from the chair, all in the space of a, a year and two months. So... It's a lot of work for him, but uh, but yeah, it was a big moment for the family as well. Yeah, it was. Looking back at back at it, obviously, I appreciate it a lot more than than you sort of the the overwhelming the overwhelming nature of it as you go through it. Uh, It doesn't allow for for that to really sort of that understanding to take hold. But looking back at it, I think I wouldn't have wanted it any other way for sure. Yeah, it, it adds an extra special meaning, definitely. And you are now the District Grand Communications Officer in Gibraltar. So yeah. quite the rise you've had, really, Stephen, <laughs> haven't you? Very rapid. Um, yeah, I would say it's it's quite unusual to, to have not gone through the chair and, and be a district or provincial officer. That's so, fantastic, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, I've been I've been very, very privileged to, to, to do that. The District Grand Master, um, you know, to, to have the, frankly, the sort of the, the, the guts to, to have the trust in me to as someone 22 years old to take on uh, a role with with that kind of responsibility I'm certainly I was honored uh, and actually what made the the appointment much nicer was that my my father was appointed and invested as the district senior grand warden at the same time oh, wow um which for for our non masonic listeners is a very senior position in in, in district and provincial grand lodge uh, and so when we collected our our sort of aprons, our, our appointments, we got to do it together in the same lineup at the same time, which is yeah, just, uh, I don't think even that, that certainly rivals the ceremonies for me, but that, to be able to do that with him. That's quite a unique journey that you've had to have been initiated, past raised and exalted by your father and to be appointed to an acting provincial rank for the first time yeah. alongside your father, yeah. who is the provincials, or sorry, the district, I should yeah. say, senior grand warden. Um, you must feel very proud and quite unique actually in all of masonry to have had that mm. yeah i'm i would certainly describe myself as 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 lucky and and, and privileged in that sense to to have to have been able to uh, through through nothing that i've done through through just you know having uh, that background yeah i'm not sure about that um <laughs> And you also do work with the university scheme don't you Stephen? can you yeah. talk to us a little bit about that yeah so so i was uh, again uh, in the fortunate position that when i went by the time i got to university I was already a, a master mason, you know, having gone through my three degrees in Freemasonry. So it meant that when I got to university, I could really partake not just in, in lodge meetings, but in, in the way that it's run as well, and um, really sort of help students m- and make Freemasonry more accessible. And that's the whole point of the scheme, to make yeah. Freemasonry more accessible to that younger demographic. Mm, absolutely. Mr. Dalton, tell us about yourself. So I also joined Freemasonry when I was 18, which feels like yesterday, but it was actually 12 years ago, 2009. Do the maths, guys. Uh, a quick <laughs> bit of, the maths. I'm, I'm no Carol Vorderman, but I think it was 12 <laughs> years ago. Um, 13 years ago. Oh, my God, I feel old now. Um, I wasn't going to say anything. I thought I'd let the listeners decide. I, I've just embarrassed myself for my terrible math skills. Um, yeah, so I, uh, I'm a Warwickshire Mason. So my mother lodge is uh, Stichel Lodge in Coventry, which is where I was living at the time. Mm -hmm. And very different to Stephen here. I didn't know anybody who was a Freemason. What I was was really curious about Freemasonry. 
and what it stands for mm. and what it's about. And so when I was 18, I wrote a letter to the provincial office, never expecting a response. And then one afternoon, I got a phone call from my lodge secretary saying, oh, wow. Wednesdays work for you, don't they? Yes, come along to my house for a meeting. And the rest, as they say, is history. So went through all the offices in my mother lodge. Yeah, I was really fortunate, actually, that 33 days after I installed my successor, I got a piece of paper on the doormat at home, a letter with a provincial um, postmark on it. Mm. And I thought, oh, it's a piece of administrative paperwork. It's something I need to sign, annual return. I don't know. Opened it. The Right Worshipful Provincial Grand Master would like to appoint you as a Provincial Grand Steward. Wow. So, which is very unusual because for those non-Masons listening or maybe those that haven't gone through this process yet, you usually in the provinces and districts have to wait anywhere between sort of six to seven years uh -huh. after you come out of the chair to get that apron. And so I became a Provincial Grand Steward, was then fortunate to go on to be a Provincial ADC, Assistant Director of Ceremonies, uh, and I'm now a past Provincial Senior Grand Deacon, but I am being promoted halfway through the year on the 30th of November to Provincial Deputy Grand Director of Ceremonies. And I'm also the chairman, for the moment, of our New and Young Masons Club, the Five of Nine Club. So similarly to Stephen, in a way, I kind of started out quite young, 18, which is very young for a Mason, the youngest mm. age you can come in. Uh, and very quickly, I found myself involved in quite a lot of stuff. Yeah. But really love it. Uh, and one thing, can I just say yeah, yeah. that I, I think it's important to note that when, even when, uh, as not that far back as when I joined, that was, the rule was still that you needed to, to have a dispensation to yes. join at 18. It wasn't normal to join at 18. But now in, in, in the short time that I've been in Freemasonry, relatively speaking, um, that's already changed. And yeah. so we've got 18 year olds, which is, which has been a really great thing from my point of view, yeah. seeing that in lodges at home. So mm. in my mother lodge or lodge of friendship, we initiated a very close friend of mine from, uh, from childhood, a childhood friend of mine. Brilliant. Um, and he was 19 when he joined. Yeah. And if that, that sort of restriction hadn't been removed, then he would have had to have joined instead of at home in his mother lodge from where from his home country. He had, he'd have had to have joined at university instead. Uh, Whereas now he gets the best of both worlds. James, just picking up on something you said, you, you said initially you were interested. What, what was it about Freemasonry that, that initially sort of piqued your interest? What was it that made you think, yeah, that's something I want to know more about? So when I was a teenager, I was... Um, in the air cadets, the R okay. RAF air cadets. And so I always got value from kind of the discipline, the camaraderie side of it, the, the formality of it, which when you get to 18, you have to leave because it's, right. it's for teenagers. Yeah. Um, and so I was kind of looking for something that would be similar to that, an opportunity to get together, to talk to other people, to have a little bit of structure and formality. Um, but then the more research I did, I discovered that it's a great charitable organisation. It does a lot of good social work. Um, it's about, as they say, making good men better. The ritual mm. side of it intrigued me. What's all this about? What's the mystery? What's the history all about? So kind of all of those things together made me think, I'd quite like to have a stab at that. Mm. And here we are. Well, I think that's are. an important uh, comment as well, that you have a stab at it. It's not necessary. I think a lot of people when they join, obviously it's a big decision, but it, I think the public perception often is that it's like an irreversible decision that once you've joined, if you don't like it, you're stuck with it for life. Yeah. And at the end of the day, it is very much that Freemasons would want you to join their lodge, but if you're not enjoying it, they won't want you to stick it out just because you've made that decision once. Yeah, I think... Find another everything. lodge. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just think it's an important distinction. that I, I often find myself sort of explaining at university mm -hmm. uh, to people who are interested. They're like, oh... It's you, know, you can't leave and blah, blah, blah. And you absolutely can, you know, mm. it's not. And what about Mr. Sean yeah. Butler? Oh, Tell oh us no. all about yourself. Your turn. My turn. We're it's both going to jointly interview you now. <laughs> oh, great. No, that's fine. Going to gang well, up on you now. Yeah, I don't expect anything less. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm the direct, Deputy Director of Communications and Marketing here at UGLE. So um, I have, I guess, a sort of unique perspective on Freemasonry. Because that's your full-time full job. Full-time job, yeah. Sort of see it um, from a number of different angles, which is interesting. Uh, I was initiated into uh, Greenwich Meridian Lodge, oh gosh, 2015. So the final year of my undergraduate degree. And in fact, my initiation was the day before my final university exam. 
That's commitment, that is. It is, and it fully explains why I only got a tutu. <laughs> uh, nice um, excuse there, Yeah, well, Sean. exactly. Yeah, nothing to do with the previous three years of uh, <laughs> neglect. So that's the only reason. That's the only reason. Nothing to do with the lack of... No. Just to clarify, yeah. Of the lack of study or revision... Or, or general or, lack of engagement with or my Or the possibility course. that it was used as a further procrastination technique before your exam. All of that. All <laughs> of the above, yeah. Um, yeah, so as I say, sort of, um, that was my, my cousin was a member. And I was very much of the opinion, in the incorrect opinion, in those days that, in those days, sounds like it was 30 years ago. Back it was only, in my day. Yeah, seven years ago. Um, well, I you was, two can say that, but I can't. All right, rub it on. Oh, my goodness. I'm 29, Stephen. Uh, <laughs> tough paper round, I know, but blimey. Um, <laughs> yes, so um, I was of the, un- the incorrect opinion in those days that, I've said it again, that just because that was the lodge that I happened to know someone in, that was my sort of only option and my only way in, which obviously is very wrong because I could have gone on the website and filled out the form and gone through that process. Um, but I didn't. And I made my way into Greenwich Meridian Lodge, which is a lodge that meets here in Freemasons Hall. And it was fascinating. Some great guys there sadly had to hand their warrant back last year, I think, which was really disappointing. Um, so for any non-Masons listening, that basically means that they, they, they stop existing as a lodge. For a number of different reasons that can happen, sort of loan membership numbers, a few other reasons. And I found my way into the staff lodge here at UGLE, which is Letchworth Lodge number 3505, where I am currently the senior deacon, and I will soon be installed as the junior warden. So I'm, I'm not far exciting. away from the chair. It is exciting, but nerve-wracking, I'm not going to lie to you. But yeah, I, I'm sort of two steps away from the top job at, at this point. I should also add I was exalted into the Royal Arch in th- 2018, uh, which was a fascinating uh, ceremony and something that I really enjoy. I, I, I love the Royal Arch, I have to say. It, it's good fun. And I, I mean, Letchworth chapter, which again is the staff chapter, only meets a couple of times a year. So I'm sort of got my eyes open for a new, for another chapter to join um, because, as I say, I do enjoy it a lot and I'd like to do more of it. Um, but as I say, yeah, you know, th- the nature of my job means that I have a unique viewpoint on Freemasonry and I have to say I'm very lucky in that I get to talk with members from across the from across the world really. Hi. Uh, um, yeah. Mr. Watley. <laughs> Mr. Dalton. <laughs> Warwickshire. It's another world, isn't it? <laughs> Country. I'm, I'm, I'm not making any comments on that. <laughs> I, I didn't understand it and I won't respond to it. <laughs> um but no, look, yeah, as I say, very lucky uh in what I do. I, I love it. And yeah, pretty much the reason behind this podcast, to be honest, is because we feel like we have something great that we want to share with people. Uh, and we hope that you learn a little bit about Freemasonry along the way. We hope that if you are a Freemason, that, you know, you get your daily advancement in Masonic knowledge alongside, obviously, what you get from reading Solomon, obviously, goes about Not saying. A shameless plug. Solomon.ujelly.org. Dot UK. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, exactly. So, you know, um, we hope that you get a lot out of it in that sense. But in terms of what this podcast actually is going to be, for those of you that are wondering, I guess our vision for it is very much that, as I say, if, if you're a non-Freemason, if it's not something that you've perhaps come across before, we want you to have a laugh. You know, we don't want to take ourselves too seriously. We want to help you learn a little bit. You know, there are still, even in 2022, and, and a huge amount of work that has been undertaken, there are still far too many misconceptions about Freemasons, Freemasonry, what we do as an organisation. And we want to address some of those. And we hope we can do it in a light-hearted, sort of funny way, really. Um, and we're going to have a load of guests on, including a very, very special one in our next episode, but more to come on that later. Um, Spoilers. Spoiler alert, absolutely. Um So, yeah, I mean, you know, it's good fun. But what what do you two guys see sort of taking from this and what do you want to pass on to others? Um, Well, like you say, if if you're uh, a non-Mason, I think, uh, as I said, with what I do with the university scheme, making it more accessible uh, to to everyone and not just the younger demographic, but particularly, I mean, for me, have a a passion for for making it more accessible to people my age. Uh, It would be lovely to see more people my age in Lodge. 
but also just the opening up that conversation. I think that's what podcasts are all about, right? Opening up a conversation about something, yeah, absolutely, a, a common interest that we all have, um, and and allowing that conversation to happen very publicly. Uh, and I think that's an important stepping stone to removing the this misconception, as you said, of, of it being so secretive and so. Uh, unaccessible yeah. and, and unattainable to if you're not from the right background or if you're not from if you don't know someone or whatever it should be a public thing because because it should be accessible to to anyone who who who, who is interested in in it in that sense i totally agree with you actually Stephen. i think making freemasonry more accessible is got to be at the core of what we're trying to achieve with the podcast mm-hmm. We know we're going to have people listening to this. There may be some of you listening now who are not Freemasons. You've stumbled across the podcast. You've seen the Twitter post. You're a little bit curious about who we are, what we do, why we dress a bit funny. And we hope we can explore all of that as we go on the journey. Um, For me, for the, the Freemasons who are listening to this, who are members... I think we get a lot of communications. We get the first rising, which is a great email. We get provincial and district communications. We get newsletters come through, but quite often it's all written communication. And, you know, you may be on the bus, in the car, on a flight, walking to work, going for a run, and you want that little fix of Freemasonry that's a bit less formal. We can have a laugh, like Sean says. We can shoot the breeze. And for me, that's what I want to bring to this. Well, I think for a lot of Freemasons, there's certainly a big part or uh, certainly a, a significant enough part of their identity is that they're a Freemason. Yes. You know? it, it means a lot to a lot of people. Mm. And so being able to to have a lighthearted thing playing on your way to work, um, you know, having just a, an extra sort of facet to your to, to your to your life, essentially, to be able to, to just enjoy that en- piece of entertainment uh, in something that, that isn't really... Uh, so widely available normally. So, we've spoken about the podcast and what we all want it to be. Shall we spend a little bit of time talking about the next episode? Yeah. Because it's a special one, isn't it? It's a really special episode. And, you know, we've kind of been shooting the breeze in this first one, introducing ourselves. We're going to get into the meat, so to speak, next episode, a first full-length episode. And we have a really special guest joining us. We do. Um, We have the honour, the distinct honour, to be joined by most worshipful brother Jonathan Spence our new pro grandmaster and uh, in that interview we're going to be speaking to him about his experiences within Freemasonry uh, his hopes for his new role as pro grandmaster and what is coming at the end of this year which is all very exciting and will uh, be revealed in our conversation with the pro grandmaster next episode um so we're very excited about that in terms of sort of the other things we want to do we're going to have sort of little excerpts we're going to have little masonic facts and snippets that we'll share to you from as i say from solomon or from the museum of freemasonry we hope to get different experts on different people from across the world of freemasonry and and when i say the world of freemasonry i mean it you know internationally we're joined here by Stephen, who's as, as we know is is from Gibraltar and is um, uh, the communications officer in, in our districts, and we're going to be speaking to people from right across UGLE, and that means districts too, uh, because we really want to make sure that we are showing off the best uh, of UGLE. Well, f- Freemasonry has a different meaning to to everyone. Uh, you, mm. you know, it has that common meaning, and you have those common values, but it, different things are important to different people, and I think. Um, being able to speak to people with all different kinds of backgrounds and that, and that their, seeing their view will be really important. And this is very much the listener's podcast as well. So if you're listening to this and you've got an idea of something that you want us to discuss, a theme for an episode, a question you'd like us to ask the programme master, do either tweet us using the UGLE Twitter page or email us podcasts at ugle.org.uk We can't respond to every email, of course, because we get hundreds in, but we would love to hear your questions, your thoughts. This is about you, the audience, so let us know what you think. And on that note, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us for this very, uh, very, 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 very introductory episode (laughs) to the official You Jelly podcast. And James, shall I leave it to you to be the first to formally close our podcast with its new title? Thank you very much. So you can listen to us back on all major podcast platforms. You can tweet us, United Grand Lodge's Twitter page. Again, like I said, email us, podcast at ujelly.org.uk. We'd love to get in touch with us. And that's it. That's Craftcast, the Freemason podcast. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.